Today we're embroidering this beautiful kitchen towel topper. This is an embroidery tutorial where I'm going to show you step by step how I made this beautiful kitchen towel topper. This file comes from Design by Juju and it is a very easy project to follow. The original file comes only on PDF instructions, so only on written instructions. So that's why I decided to make a video just in case there's someone out there who wants to make this, has the PDF, but kind of wants to compare the steps from the instructions to the video, plus share with you the mistakes I made when I made the first one, quite a few mistakes, and how to avoid those mistakes. That way, your kitchen towel topper will look beautiful, professional, and done correctly. And of course, anything that I used, any links are down in the description of this video. I've also added a couple of timestamps. That way you can jump into a certain point of this video um, that you may want to watch or refresh and will make it easier for you. Okay, you guys, here it is. First of all, we're going to use our Brother SE 1900 embroidery machine. And for this design, the file only comes in a five by seven size. So you will need a five by seven hoop. Maybe a bigger one will work, definitely not a smaller one. So you will need a towel and matching fabric, right? Something that looks nice and contrasting. You really don't need a lot of fabric, just a fat quarter will work. And two like thick strips of fabric. This is about eight inches wide and then the length. One thing that's important is that you interface your fabric. So I put a little piece of interfacing on one side and here on the other side. So I'll just make sure when I hoop it that I place my hoop right here where the interfacing is. You're going to need some batting. And again, this is a little square or rectangle of batting. And this batting is eight by seven. The instructions say to use water soluble stabilizer. And you definitely can do that. However, I didn't have any. Instead, I used this tearaway stabilizer when I made the first kitchen towel topper and it worked fine. The only thing was that I only used one sheet and so by the time I was done stitching the kitchen towel topper it had torn up the, the stabilizer. So I'm going to use two sheets of stabilizer this time. You will need tape so any tape like masking tape or any type of tape or you can use some basting adhesive. I'm going to try that today with uh, the one that we're making in this video. Then you have your embroidery thread. And of course, this is the fun part. This is like coloring with thread, right? You're going to pick the colors that you like that will match with your fabric and your design. What I suggest you do is that whatever color, like in this case, I'm gonna choose this color, for the border around the kitchen towel topper. Make sure that you have enough bobbin thread to go around the kitchen towel topper. It will take a lot of thread. So what I decided to do is that I have three bobbins here ready to go. And these are the same color as my base color. That way I don't have to keep switching the bobbin every time I change colors. And this is completely optional, but it's nice to have uh, the embroidery needles for your embroidery machine. If you don't have the embroidery needles, it's fine. Just don't use the regular standard needle. Use like the one that's next to it, like 100 over 14. You need something a little thicker, right? but make sure it's a brand new needle. That is like the most important. It's a brand new needle that is not dull. Um, just, this is again optional, but 
a brand new needle, it's important. Before we take it to this embroidery machine, we're going to hoop our stabilizer. So we're going to take our two layers of stabilizer and the base hoop here. This is the uh, section where I will connect it to the sewing machine. And here's where you open your hoop, the screw. So we're just going to place the two stabilizers over the hoop like this. And then you're going to take the inner part and you're just going to snap it in there and get the stabilizer uh, snug in there, okay? This part can be a little tr you know, tricky because it's, it's kind of thick because of the two layers of stabilizer. But I believe me, it's, it's doable. Now you can close the hoop here. This is a little tight. But you want to make sure that it's snapped in place. Okay, that is not coming loose and that it, it's tight here in the center and not um, bubbly or that it doesn't look like a hammock. Okay, you want it to be tight. First things first, we're going to make sure that our bobbin is in place and our machine is threaded. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I have a video here that you can check out where I show you exactly how to thread this sewing machine. So now we already have our flash drive connected to the embroidery machine and is threaded. We're going to select here, it's going to move the carriage. And then here is our USB. And this is the image that I am going to make today. And set. And as you can see, um, it fills up the entire embroidery area, five by seven. We don't want to change anything, resize it or anything. We're just going to click edit end and embroider. Now it's going to pull up all the threads and the different uh, colors and stitching that you will need to start the project. So first you're going to do the placement stitching for the batting and you're going to do this straight on top of the stabilizer. So you lower your presser foot, press the button and you will see the stitching where you will be placing your batting and it's right on top of your stabilizer. No fabric, nothing else. Next, we're going to do the tack down stitching, but before we do that, we're going to raise, raise our presser foot and we're going to put our batting in there, making sure the batting covers all the placement stitching, okay? So everything. You lower your presser foot again, and right here, you're going to see um, another minute it's going to do the draw the stitching for the tack down so let's do that consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you have learned something today.
And here's the mistake I made that I really need to warn you about. As you can see, I removed the hoop from the machine to trim off the batting. Don't do that. <laughs> For some reason, when I did this, I, you know, cut, I trimmed off the batting. I put the fabric on top of it to run then the stitching over my fabric. And when I was done, for some reason, it was crooked. It was, the stitching was not even on top of the previous stitching. And I pretty much had to stop and start all over. And so don't do that. Do not, you're going to see next how to do it correctly. So when you get to this step, don't remove the hoop from the machine to trim off any excess batting. Believe me, you will thank me later. Now we're going to continue and pretty much pretend that the mistake I made didn't happen. So as you can see, I didn't remove the hoop from the machine. And now I'm going to place the fabric on top of the batting and we are going to be uh, stitching the placement stitching or also known as the placement line for the fabric. Again, without removing the hoop, I am just going to now change the thread because we're going to start doing the design uh, inside the kitchen towel topper. So at this point, if you have a different thread color that you want to use, go ahead and do that. And we're going to be making the little uh, leaves or uh, swivels uh, around the, the name. So go ahead and do that now by leaving everything in place the way it is. Now that we've completed that step, we're going to change the thread color so that we can continue stitching the design for this towel. Now we can remove the hoop from the machine because we're going to trim off all the excess fabric and batting using your curved scissors. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm doing it really fast here, but actually this process takes a while. So take your time here, okay? Just get as close as you can to your outer stitching without cutting the stitching. And for the center, I used my seam reaper to kind of rip the fabric a little bit and then use the curved scissors now to get in there and cut the layers so you have, you know, all the layers of the fabric and the batting. So again, take your time during this process, but get as close as you can to that stitch line without um, ruining <laughs> your project. Now flip your hoop over and you're going to take the other piece of fabric and we're going to tape it or stick it to the back of the towel topper. For this, I'm using adhesive basting 
but you can use a regular tape as well that will work just make sure that your fabric covers the entire stitching area of your uh, kitchen towel topper and that it is flat in um, there are no bubbles or anything like that so just like this it should be just fine now you're going to return the hoop to the machine with the pretty design facing up and you're going to follow the steps the next stitch is the tack down line and that is going to pretty much join together the front and the back of your towel topper Once this step is completed, you're going to take the hoop back off of the machine. You're going to trim off the fabric on the back of the hoop. And of course, carefully using your curved scissors and making sure that you don't cut the stitching line, you're going to trim off the outer edge in the inner part of the towel topper and you're going to put it back on the machine. Take your time here. This is a very important step because you don't want to cut this stitching, you don't want to cut the fabric, but you also don't want to have a lot of the batting around the edge because if you do, then the outer uh, stitching, the pretty stitching, may not cover all of the batting. So you want to make sure that you get as close as you can to your stitch line without cutting the stitching and getting all that batting out as much as you can. And please don't cut the stabilizer in the center. <laughs> Make sure that that's still there, okay? <laughs> and this is a very important tip that will save you such a headache and it is to have a full bobbin before you start the final step make sure the bobbin is full full because this last step takes a lot of thread and you don't want your bobbin to run out of thread in the middle of the stitching because it will not look nice so make sure you do that Now the machine is going to start the satin stitching around the outer edge of the kitchen towel topper and the center. Now this step takes approximately 30 minutes to complete. At first, the machine will do some sort of zigzag stitching all around the edge of the towel topper and the center. And it will do this twice. And then it will start the decorative stitching, which it is very uh, beautiful, but it takes a lot of thread. And this is the part that takes a long time. So we're not gonna be watching this for 30 minutes. I sped up the video, of course, but go ahead and get yourself a coffee, a cup of tea, 
watch your favorite show <laughs> because this is going to take a while. Now without taking the hoop off of the machine, the next step is going to be to stitch the placement lines for the towel. So you're going to let the machine do what it needs to be done. You're not removing the hoop or anything, it's just going to tell you where you will be placing your towel. So make sure you wait for this step. Now you are going to remove the hoop off of the machine and you're going to flip the hoop so that you can see the back of your kitchen towel topper because that's where you're going to now place the towel. You're going to grab your towel and you're, you're going to fold your towel in half along the kind of like the short edge or the top of the towel and with the front of the towel facing up this is important the front of your towel is facing up you're going to place the towel over that thin edge of the towel topper matching the lines that the machine stitched for you right so you're going to match the center of the towel with the center of the topper and you're measuring it so that way you know when you fold it you don't have a lot of extra towel on one side compared to the other and you're going to secure your towel using tape like i'm doing right now or you can also use pins so make sure that if you use pins that they're not in the stitching area of the machine you don't want the needle to hit the pins so that's why i'm using tape to me is safer you can also add pins to the front if you want to secure the towel and as long as it doesn't get along the stitching area you will be fine so now carefully you're going to put the hoop back in the machine and I say carefully because you don't want the towel to move and you don't want the towel to also get folded and uh, stitched uh, incorrectly. So make sure that your towel is flat on the bottom and that, um, that everything is smooth. You will have some towels here to your right, that's normal and but keep it away from the stitching away from the hoop make sure your hoop is flat because at this point we're going to stitch the towel in place and you want to make sure that everything is secured but it's also straight that it's not crooked and you don't have folded towels etc so again, take your time with this step.
Let's remove now our project from the hoop. And as you can see, I still have a lot of stabilizer around it because this is the tear away stabilizer. Look how easy it comes off. If you were using the other type of stabilizer, you will need a, a cotton swab and water um, and dilute it that way. But since this is the tear away one, I don't need any of that. It, uh, it comes right off. If you have a little bit of stabilizer around the edges, you can just easily kind of peel it off and it will come right off. And here is your towel topper with the towel attached. Now I am going to take my curved scissors and I'm just going to kind of trim off any little bit of thread that I may have, especially inside the design. You know how it jumps from one section of the stitching to the next. I'm just going to trim off any of those uh, pieces of thread or any little bit of stabilizer or anything that may be uh, there that you know doesn't look good of course making sure that I don't damage the design and this is how it will look I hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot wait to see what you have made. So make sure you tag me on social media so that I can see your project as well. And if you want to see any of my other embroidery videos where I show you the Brother SE 1900 and a couple of other projects, check out the next set of videos. Ciao.